Welcome back, everybody. Digital Chaos versus Immortals, game number three. An elimination match, best of three series. To determine who's going to be heading to the finals of the PGL North American Qualifier. And to wrap up a very special series, I have a very special guest. Not only do I have Eosin, but I also have the grandest of grants joining us. Where, where you at, Grant? Nice. Hello? <laughs> <laughs> Great intro, Grant. Yo, what up, what up? It's Grant. Grant, it's your boy, you know, back from a sunny trip to California, just chilling back in Colorado, living the life. You just can't get enough Dota, can you? You you went straight from King's Cup to immediately asking if I wanted a, a, a stats man last night, which I missed your message. I'm so sorry. It's okay. Some people make mistakes, and you got to forgive them. Also, yo, Eason, you've been doing a great job. Ten Thank you, Psych. <laughs> Why you got to be like that? You didn't even invite me to Dude, hang out. You were here for two thing. weeks. It's the same thing with Grant every Dying. single time. You can't take those off-the-cuff compliments from him ever. It's yeah, always going right. to be followed up by a psych. It's all right. That's what we love him for. Nah, this, you guys have been doing a good job. This has been a pretty good series. Game two a little stompy. I just have one question. Is Immortals actually sponsored by Tostitos? <laughs> <laughs> of course, I mean, that'd be pretty high questions right? in the world, Grant. You found the most important of all. I love Tostitos. Love Those scoops. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, that's some good taste, man. Those scoops are something else. Grant, since you're the uh, the remaining. NA historian of Dota, and you were listening to the cast, what did Eosin and I do wrong? That's what I want to know. I wasn't listening to the cast. I just right, I was watching a stream, but I haven't muted you. I mean, you're the same. I mean, <laughs> yeah, no yeah, one listen. Other casters don't listen to other casters. Like, Jesus. I don't know. That's just how it is. We're all arrogant, egotistical fucks, and can't stand listening to other people. That's true, but man, these opening picks, I mean, everyone's ready for a patch, but it's interesting, right? Jakiro was used by, like, Cole and the Dyers team, and now every single NA team has picked it up, except DC, and I think it's hindering them. Actually, they did run Jakiro in the first game. All so right, well, I'm a liar. Out. They did lose. So maybe they just need a, a winning Jakiro, but I mean, truly, Nature's, I mean, I don't know how you guys feel about it, but I feel like Nature's Prophet is, like, Arguably the most OP offlaner of the patch right now. I believe in a way he is, but the thing is, if you do not have a good stars in HS, it feels weak, right? Because the, the whole point of him is you win your lane to like level 3, 4, then you just start ganking around everywhere. But if you're not, I mean, a good player, not even that, like you can fall behind in levels so quickly, right? Like you always find farm, but I mean, Nature's probably just struggles with finding levels if he fails at ganks. But he's definitely the strongest off laner. And he's got a lot of help with the uh, the Slardar. Whether or not Slardar is going to be rotating for the Nature's Prophet at all in the, the early laning phase is yet to be determined. But when we go into the mid game, it'll definitely help out a lot to have that amplify damage. Yep. You know, Nature's Prophet, like, I definitely agree with you. He is pretty OP, but a lot of other, I mean, not a lot of other regions, but Team Secret, they have some of the best answers for a Nature's Prophet, in my opinion. The moment they see that hero, they will pick up Spirit Breaker along with something like, I don't know, a Bad Rider or eventually a Storm. They always have like two heroes who can easily catch out a Nature's Prophet. Yeah, I think the uh, the biggest thing, who was it? It was the Dyer. I forget who they were playing, right? They ran Nature's Prophet actually in a carry lane. So there's still a little variable. It, it seems always off lane, but Pycat did run that. What the hell? Why did they have an Oracle? We, we've seen Oracle picked up against Batrider, and we've seen it picked up against Darkseer. But we don't have either one of those heroes yet on Immortals. Yeah, but like uh, my man Smartman Eos in here says, Batrider is one of the few decent counters, especially in the mid-game against Five Nature's Prophet. Remaining. So by picking the Oracle, they already have a nice save. And I mean, you don't really want to play as a Batrider versus Oracle, so it discourages the pick. Do you like those, those kind of drafting decisions, though? Do you like preemptive pickups? It's weird. A lot of the times I do, but with DC, uh, I really like DC. I like all their players, but Moonmander's a captain. Like, he's still, you can still tell, like, he doesn't have his water feet under him while he's cruising. But 
I, I think Oracle's a really underused hero. Like, right? He has he has the best save in the game easily. He has a heal that not only that, it's one of the best nukes in the game with a zero cast time, cast point, whatever. I I don't know. In, in general, I don't like it, but here I really like Oracle, so I'll go with yeah. DC. All right, immortals. Hard for me. Oh. Monkey King. Potential Monkey King safe lane here. I don't know how that hero actually does against the, the Furion. Do you? Destroys him. Absolutely massacres him. You get a poor man's shield, then Quelling Blade in the lane. I mean, what, what does a Furion do? The Treants do nothing against poor man's shield. Monkey King almost has a longer range than Furion for God knows what reason. And then you just get Jingu Mastery and he actually can't stay in lane. I can feel that, especially once he gets like level three, and he, if he wants to, he's able to jump into trees and have that extra mobility to really get on top of the Furion. Yeah, I guess level is, one might be rough, but yeah, is the but, matchup actually that bad? I believe it is. I've seen. I mean, obviously, take it with a grain of salt. I've seen an FPL a lot when it's Arteezy playing Monkey King, it's one of the best carries. But against like anyone, pretty much on Nature's Prophet, you. You can go anything, right? Like, poor man's shield, you get an orb of venom as well. And, like, what does Nature's Prophet do? Stand and fight? If there's a Jakiro there, you just die. Like, Monkey King's just an extremely strong laner in general. Especially against those, like, just weak ranged heroes. Yeah, that's definitely true. Uh, some of the European regions, they run him in the mid lane to counter out some of the more popular mid laners, actually. Ten seconds remaining. I think they run it against Pugna, actually. And it's actually okay against Pugna, too. Bro, don't bring up that weak Asian shit. We're in America. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. I've been watching a lot of Chinese Dota, actually, with you doing some of it. You know, E-Home Keen, I can't believe they beat LGD. Just want to give them a shout-out, because it's always fun casting them in open qualifiers. Wait, hold up. Are you mixing me up with someone? I have done nothing but yeah. EU and CIS. No, I mean, I, I mean, I've been watching, like, all the... I've been watching your EU, and then I've been watching Chai. I was trying to, like, do two things at once. You guys need to keep up. Oh, I'm on that fifth that. dimension. <laughs> Grand oh, you're you're yes. pretty smart. Wait up. Whoa, whoa. Oh, God. Do you like Death Prophet? Isn't that a pretty all any hero, wouldn't you say? Especially with the Nature's Prophet? I mean, they got the the synergy with the Oracle and the Sardar. So, uh, I feel like Digital Chaos are going to take this pretty fast pace, where there's, there's actually a lot of synergy with all three of their heroes, right? They've got Oracle save on Death Prophet, which is really strong, because she's got two different heals. You've got uh, Physical Damage Amplifier and Slardar. And you've got, in the laning phase, it's going to be very tough because Spirit Siphon, and then you have a Furion TPing in behind you, potentially with, like, with an Orb of Venom and stuff. Like, you lose that mid-hero. Say, like, a level 4 Furion comes in, and, like, you lose that mid-hero. He's going to push your tower immediately with the Death Prophet, and you could just start losing towers just like that. I, I feel like Digital Chaos is really trying to take the laning phase and some of the options away from Immortals and, and just start their bowl rolling in their favor, kind of like they did in Game 2. Yeah, I, I think both teams, after that Bloodseeker pick, right? I mean, when you pick up a Bloodseeker, you want to play pretty fast-paced as well because you're really good early game, then you kind of fall off until you get that Radiance usually. But Monkey King's the same way. Like, how does DC fight into a Monkey King ult? It seems like both teams want to take fights on their own accord, obviously. I mean, most teams do. But it feels like, especially in this one, it's going to be up to Digital Cast Slardar getting a, an early blink, I think. Because I think Immortals just has a way better mid-game lineup even against DP. Dire team ban. Yeah, I, I don't think there's... An, do you think there's enough on DC to actually address this Monkey King, though? That's a lot of the time... problem, I don't think. Not a problem? No, I think they do have a problem. Like, if oh, you, okay. you get, like, you get your ghosts out. The problem is that Death Prophet can't go that stupid EE build that I think is really bad. I don't know. That's just me. They're pro Ten players, I'm not. But, many. like, the Solar Crest, no Yules. I think, like, Death Prophet needs a Yules. Like, 100%, especially versus Monkey King. So, we'll see. Yeah. You would it? What if they just went Necrophos on Digital Chaos? And that would give them an anti-Monkey King option, right? Like, whenever that guy comes into team fights, you just throw a couple nukes at him and you're able to Reaper Scythe him. Just stop the, the power of that big ultimate. It would give you another synergy with the Oracle. Like, how, how has Necrophos just gone untouched through this whole entire drafting phase? That's a good question. Was it touched in the first two games? Yeah, it was. Uh, at least I don't remember the bans. But that is a good point. I'm really surprised that we're at the very last pick phase and no one has banned or touched it. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I hate that hero. And there's the ban. So, Cap, I mean, you're a 7k player. You make these calls and, like, Immortals is like, damn, he's right. 
Well, apparently it wasn't banned in the first game, so I'm only half right here. But it would have been the hero. What the f have we just Steven? Have we just gone through? Okay, Necrophos was banned in the in the second game. All right, I'm not crazy. I think it's whenever an ancient apparition ancient apparition got banned in the first one too. Then that's I think that's when. Ooh, the Pugna. You said that maybe possible deny pick there as well. Like you said, Monkey King versus Pugna. And I mean, if DC really wanted to run a hard push with Death Proud Nature's Prophet, who better than the little skeleton mage himself? Yo, how how, how good is? It doesn't have the greatest like it's not the greatest pickup against these hero. But what what yeah. about Huskar? Hmm. It's a little risky. Count it out. Right? Sorry, I I I think I mean picking Husker anytime is pretty risky, right? But even this yeah. game, like versus I, I just hate Jakiro. Like when you're playing as a Huskar, not that I ever do. But just the if you get ice path once, you just lose the fight instantly yeah. when you're low. I think Huskar does pretty poorly against a Bloodseeker as well. Yeah. Yeah, because it's it always a long... damage. Well, it, it it's like you always have a long startup on your jump. The potential for you to get ruptured while you're jumping is really high, and you can pretty much die to it. Yeah, and I, I know Lacoste always brought it up. The fact that as a Husker, right, you want to be low HP, that's where you get your damage, and Bloodseeker gets damage from you being low HP. It's just almost an exact counter. Oh, there we go. Uh, it was like, I could, really couldn't think of any heroes that are good against Bloodseeker that were left, but Weaver with the Lincolns, definitely relatively strong. Versus this lineup from Immortals. So I I, on, I did watch like all of game two, but game one was it pretty even or was it Immortals taking it pretty easily? No, it was it was very close. back and forth. Oh, okay, so DC obviously winning game two, probably feeling a little bit better going into this game. They have a reasonably solid draft. You have Mason on Weaver, one of his favorite heroes to play. Abed on DP, which he played a lot in King's Cup. I think it just comes down to uh, if the Oracle gets jumped on before a fight, it really could be bad and. I guess we'll see. Grant, you were there casting the the King's Cup and Digital Chaos's uh, definite fall from grace there, getting 3-0 yeah. by the Dire. Pretty handily. Was there something like that really stood out to you about DC that they really need to improve upon? Or was it kind of alluding back to what you were saying about Moonman, or you feel like the captaining just wasn't quite there yet? Uh I feel it was a drafting, right? Because even the night before that, DC 2 0 the Dire, and uh, I believe it, in PGL or something. Yeah. And then the next day, like, Peter, like, I, I made, I was like, I can't wait for this finals. And Peter's like, I'm going to go banana on Moonmander's drafting. And, like, it just felt like he was out drafted at every faucet wow. of the game. Facet? Faucet? Yeah. yeah Which one works. is this? Prepare for I love I faucets. Facet. You can get cold or hot water. Like, what a, what a <laughs> man made machine. <laughs> wow. That's pretty hype, Grant. You're right. One second, why, see why, if stats work. Why are they all wishing uh, luck to Ferev specifically? I mean, I, I don't know Ferev just much the next guy, but I mean, why not? Ferev is one of the friendliest Korean uh, players. In my opinion. Got me my Y'all see that? Do you yeah, guys see I the see stat? It. We see. All it. right, so I know how to do it all now. Right. We're good. Stats work. Sick. Stats, oh, man, Dubu. Grant. Dubu's gonna be the first one down. It looks like is they're gonna be easily picking up that first blood. Digital chaos. Already one step ahead in this game three. Yeah, that's impressive to kill Jakir. Look at him. He has, uh, we still find this here ridiculous. I'm sure everyone does. He has 700 HP at level one with zero stat items. Yeah. That's pretty insane, right? Yeah, pretty insane. But Weaver's pretty good against him, right? Because he's got slow attack speed. So the bugs are yeah. just able to work on that low armor. Even though they did just lose a kill there, obviously that's bad. Even first blood, they got two pretty good deep wards, and they barely miscounted it on the radiant side. So mm. the mortals are gonna have good vision this whole early game. But it looks like they're also not just gonna be given up first blood, but also the bounty runes. So three of them go the way of uh, digital chaos. It looks like Bulba is not gonna be giving that signature babysit for Abed in the mid lane. Uh, he's actually gonna be stepping on MSS's lane first kind of makes sense. I don't think Death Prophet really needs it, to be honest. It's a very signature solo mid-hero. You might no. be speaking too soon. Or bad <laughs> not. <Come> on, <laughs> of course, Bulba's not going to go anywhere but mid in the beginning of the game. Oh, wait, oh. the career? So close, not going to be block. able to get it. MP is going to pay for that body block, taking 
about half his HP away, but uh, saves his courier's life. Oh, wait, I... he's gonna be careful. No more spirit siphons, so. We'll yeah, level one spirit now. siphon feels so good the first time you use it. You just body someone out of lane, and then you realize the cooldown, how long it actually is a level one, and you don't have more than one. Yeah, it's the equivalent of like Winter Wyvern bodying an offlaner out of the lane, you know? You feel yeah. great, and then all of a sudden that guy comes back with one tango, and you can't fight him anymore because you don't have it. Yeah, and I, I'm looking at these lanes now. I think Weavers, I think both teams are happy with their safe lane. I think if a QO knows how to play this lane, it should be pretty easy for him, but obviously Nature's Prop can always pull creeps with Treants. We see people abuse that quite a bit. That's why it's all the more important for Dubu to get these pulls off. That was an interesting pull. He actually pulled it straight up with the tree cut down. Damn. Oh yeah, I have seen a couple of teams do this. I guess it's just, what, less likely to be interrupted by the offlaner? Yeah. Yep. It's also like a new path you can open up in case you get in trouble. A lot of supports are actually saved by this path that's opened up. They get die or dove on. It feels like DC is probably a little bit happier. They know Abed's gonna have farm, and he really is the true carry. Even when he's playing, when he's playing middle or carry, they always give him the farm. Right? Mason's just been put on these, get a few items up and just own heroes, and that's exactly what he's on. Right? Weaver, you get like an Aquila. Sometimes we've seen Urn. Mason's gone Urn on carry Weaver, and he just roams around while Abed farms. Mm -hmm. I think they're hey, happy with that. Has he ever gone the uh, the old like? Really fast Solar Crest build? Anything like that? Nah, he's gotten like the more fight, even more fighting. I think it was like Treads Aquila Urn, and I really mm -hmm. like it, right? Okay. He had a lot of like nine minutes, which is insane amounts of farm, obviously. And you know, who can deal with a Weaver with that much farm that early? Yeah. MSS continue to try and shove Dubu away from him and get some of that pressure, precious CS, but you could see QO is challenging MSS every single time he gets close to the creep wave. Uh, I have a question for you guys. I've, I've asked some people, isn't it crazy how, like, Orb of Venom was never picked up on, like, any heroes? Then, like, all oh, melee yeah. heroes, this is pretty good. Now every ranged offlaner gets it, is it? Like, and the extra harass really doesn't feel like that much, right? It's four damage after hero reduction. I think it's actually pretty significant. Oh, MSS is going to get out of here. I think the biggest thing that people have realized is that every safe lane carry, you know, melee carry, is, is going to pick up that poor man's shield. And if you have a PMS... Unless you have phase boots, you're not going to do much damage. And that's kind of what the Orb of Venom provides. It makes up for that that poor man's shield block, right? Okay, so, so you don't even think if you... it's that overrated? Like, I mean, it is only four damage a tech for, what, three ticks? Yeah, so it's 12 I, damage I, every I hit. So. But uh, I, I think do it's think... Pretty good. I think the what, what the progression was is that the safe lane carries picked it up. Uh, like, heroes like Animage would pick up an, an early Orb of Venom. And it was so effective against these offlaners. And we start running some of these these range off laners. Fury Gun really starts coming into vogue, and you you see the advantage of how just a small movement speed change can really add to you. And it, it may be a very small amount for a range hero, but a range hero takes advantage of a movement speed difference so much more, right? And with the whole entire idea of a range hero is purely harassment. I mean, like that that's the point of it, right? Is like you're running an H's profit to harass the safe laner out of lane. So you've got to make the most of that oh, situation. Lane. MP almost going to be blown up. Oh, there's the Crypt Swarm. Just enough to be able to finish him off. And Febby cannot do anything to stop it. They even had MSS ready to go for the TPN. We, we talked about this in the draft, that this mid lane is going to be pretty tough for Immortals. Yeah, especially just how DC plays, right? Like you talked about, like, oh, Boba starting top lane. It's a shock, right? Because he's just always there to bully <laughs> middle every game. Yeah. Night Stalker, Slardar, like, that's just... His job is to be Abed's, like, boyfriend. <laughs> he's the, uh... Not a bad job, that guy's 10k. I mean, you know, I you know he's, uh, in, like, a prison break. You gotta, you gotta hold the pocket. That's what Bulba right, does. Bro, I don't know, I've never been to jail, but... <laughs> Kill bottom. MSS yep. coming down now. He'll still be able to get away. Didn't get clipped by the bugs, so he's good. Abed, he's got a shrine up. Looks like he's gonna be forced to use it. Yeah, it feels like a very good start for both Abed as well as Mason. I mean, the only death on the side of DC is a Moon Meander death that just happened. But QO is getting a decent amount of farm. I mean, you expect that, though. You're in the safe lane, and you pretty much just stick Dubu up there. Like, he hasn't roamed at all. He's only staying there. So, yeah. you've seen a lot of Monkey Kings in FPL, right? 
Oh yeah. Yeah, because I've been seeing them all over, all over NA pubs, and I I feel like this hero is surprisingly strong at just farming and farming and becoming like kind of a late game carry. Yeah, he's. It's almost impossible to fight into the hero. Like once you get le even level one old, like in, the armor is just insane. Like if you walk inside of it to fight him, you're taking damage from all the little I don't know what they're called spirits. Pardon me, missed that kill there, but. Don't but worry. also, I, I he just it. has so much armor, you can't kill him. And up, Fares getting gone on too, as well as Fabi. The bugs plus the Furion. Uh, it's just they've got actually so many minus armor options for Furion to take advantage of. This is getting pretty rough. Eason, what what do we do for Immortals? How do we change this game? All right, it's like Grant said, Monkey King is incredibly strong when it comes to these mid-game team fights because the the other strong thing that you know he has going for him, apart from that super powerful ulti is that while he is a carry, you know, Boundless Strike is always a great way to start off a fight too. You know, he, that Boundless Strike stuns for 1.6 seconds and that thing has some serious range on it. It's and he goes down. Abed does have to deal with Febby though, but it looks like he's going to be chased away. Bulba doesn't actually have mana for a stun, so he can't stop the Monkey King from just coming in and slamming on Abed. So they will be able to trade mid for mid for some rotations though. Uh, but at the same time, it was exorcism used. Yep, that's a, uh, it's definitely a worth it kill. Taking down Abed, he's worth more at this point, and because exorcism down, you know your towers are fine for the next 110 seconds. It's a big rotation for immortals not having to worry about that. And I think, like, is there anything they're going to be waiting for? for I so, my bad. Uh, Mortal, I think they're just waiting for uh, Pugna to get seven. You just can group up as Oleg fight. Oh, QO. QO. He throws out the ultimate. He knows he needs that extra armor Maybe to be armor. able to survive, and he does. He gets the lifesteal off on MSS, unable to finish off and get the double kill. The magic damage coming out from Oracle just proves to be too much. Uh, another one of your favorite things about Oracle, right, Grant? Yeah, that is uh, purifying flames. Like I, I hate to say, it, but an overthrow, right? One of the most broken heroes because the cast point of it—it's so easy to chaos. It, I mean, that, they wouldn't—that would have been a triple kill if you don't have an oracle there, right? If you have someone else like a dazzle, you're getting triple killed inside of that ulti. The right. armor is so good, man. Even smaller, like magic damage supports that don't do that much nuke damage, probably still would have been uh, Monkey King just wiping through people. Yeah. So that was a, a decent thing for them. They're still down about a kill. Now they're coming after him. He's dead up top. See you later, Moon. Mason's going to try and get the rebuttal, though, with MSS. They didn't manage to get bugs on him, but QO is going to be stuck inside the trees. Slammed by Bulba. And uh, they will manage to get the counter kill with Abed. Closing in pretty fast on Dubu, too. They are definitely going to just shove down this tower. Bulba tries to catch the TP out from Dubu, but unsuccessfully. If the biggest thing about that kill right there is the only reason Mason and them committed up top is because they know the Monkey King went to uh, heal, so he TP'd back, meaning he wouldn't be able to TP out at all, and it's just a, a free kill if he goes on Moonmander. Mm -hmm. This is uh, definitely Monkey King's biggest weakness, though. If you have a bad start, it is actually so difficult to catch up because you are very, very vulnerable to pretty much any type of damage. I mean, Wukong's command is actually, while it is insanely powerful, it does take some time to... to get out and I mean if he just gets jumped on by pretty much anyone and he's behind it's gonna be a kill <laughs> I love yeah. you can do these pictures these pictures are fire top yeah. lane QL is gonna be run down he does have the lifesteal though but he doesn't have his stun so he can't get out the big burst of damage just heals up a little bit and starts backing up and deals with that bug meanwhile bottom lane is being pressured pretty heavily by Ferev who's now level 8 is the one hero that's kind of gone unnoticed since Bloodseeker's been spending so much time in the jungle. It's been Ferev who's kind of speeding along in the net worth chart, currently just behind the Weaver, but far behind our top net worth is Abed sitting at almost 5k at 10 minutes. Yeah, 1,000 up at this point in the game over anyone is pretty damn big at 10 minutes. No one's really that far, though. 5k net worth at 10 minutes isn't the most but when everyone's this low you're feeling good as a death prophet right and he's going the yules first thank you uh, yeah not getting that i i still disagree even though cc and c they won that 3-0 against dc and they did go like that weird build on death prophet i think yules is just too good really highest net worth for immortals is breath. about to die 
Now, he does have a rotation coming in if he could just survive long enough for his team to maybe pick up one or two kills, but he just dies so quickly. QO. Oh, they want to go on for the slam and jam. They're going to be able to catch him too. Void. Oh, uh, they'll still get him for sure, but delayed a little bit by the successful Sprout and Immortals right. trade. How do you feel about the Midas on Monkey King? Um, uh, I'm yeah, just not a big fan of Midas, so I want to know what you guys think. I'm not a fan either. I prefer the Echo Saber. I think it's good enough to help him farm, and it just makes you that much stronger in the team fights earlier. Dude is going to get picked off here. He was I, way out there. I actually think it's necessary for this game, just because Immortals is... Like, they... Their laning phase is so ruined that I I really don't think that they're going to be able to contest some of these five man pushes. Yeah, and, and, wow, this is a very early Roche. Sorry, Cap. Yeah. I mean, just look how much physical damage they're able to lay out into this Roche on so quickly. Yeah, and they, they, I mean, they knew this was happening, right? They literally ran in their five man unsmoked. The Dyer has a ward there, and Bobo's just sitting up there. I mean, if Monkey King can somehow get an ult up, but it's going to be too late now. Oh, I thought. Maybe they were going to get another uh, Roshan Steel. Get the blood yeah, well, that's the classic, right? The uh, Either the top tier 2 for Roshan for Radiant or the bottom tier 2 for Roshan. So not the worst trade, honestly, for Immortals. I mean, they're actually up gold now. I don't think they're going to be wanting to fight, though, for quite some time. And I think that's going to mean that DC in the end are going to get more in exchange with his Aegis uh, over the course of the next five minutes. Yep. MP gonna be in Top some lane. big trouble here with Fury on TPing it as well. I mean, Fury's not necessary. They don't even need this fourth man on the field that they can always bring to this fight. It's just like when they dove mid. Which is not even yeah. necessary. They just have but too I guess much they, damage. You just go into a push maybe, but uh, good rotation stopping that already. And you yeah, see Monkey King far. just chilling in the trees down bottom. Like, he wants to farm, but he's like, wait, where'd everyone go? That's the problem with Monkey King. Like, you never feel that safe. If you just get initiated over, like, a Blink Slardar, Monkey King's just dead. Yeah. He has to spend so much time off the map farming neutrals. Again, I think that's where the, the Midas comes back into play, right? Is that you just have to be able to, to make do for this mid game and kind of just grind through it. And not get caught, and Midas is a lot better for allowing you to be able to play safe yep. while still getting farm. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I think if the laning was, you know, normal and it was even, he probably should have went for a fighting item. But yeah, yeah, for I sure. I mean, they're they're struggling a bit right now. Their lineup is definitely not meant to uh, to be losing this part of the game. But to be honest, neither is his digital chaos, right? And I, I think that's the thing. Like, I. I've heard this time and time again, like, teams know what they should be doing against MVP Phoenix and now Immortals. They know they should be shoring up their laning phase and just picking heroes that can fight because they know Immortals is going to take fights to them. Yeah. This will come in handy. I feel like Immortals is kind of leveled up in that sense, though. They are kind of holding back on that those kind of engagements, you know. They, they actually just go into farming and they're patient. Or more patient now. Yeah. I think that does come with uh, moving to NA, honestly. Like, people say, like, you know, ooh, NA just stupid bad Dota. But in Korea and, like, Southeast Asia, it was a lot easier to just be better than everyone else. And NA now, right, we have, like, five good teams. They realize their one play style isn't going to carry them to lands anymore. They're going to have to do more than just running at people. Hey, we're seeing well, a lot of times that uh, Immortals are picking and choosing their timings for fights. I mean, right now, you could see how, just how spread out they are. Like, Febby, twice in a row now, right? We saw Steven, uh, Febby farming up jungle with his four position. A lot of times, just trying to grind whatever gold he can. They're not looking for fights. They're just looking for ways to farm that aren't near Digital Chaos. It's been a couple of minutes, and they're still retaining their gold lead, so... I mean, I think overall, Immortals should be pretty happy with what they've accomplished. Yeah, this is definitely uh, pretty impressive. Especially considering how easy their heroes are to kill. Monkey King, Pugna, even Bloodseeker. They're, those are all heroes that are just easily bursted down when they're initiated. Yep. 
but... And like, like we see MS says, this is what I was talking about. He just now hit level 10 at 15 minutes. I don't know. That hero just feels like it has level problems. But look at his farm. His farm's great. Yeah. Hero just really has level problems. But I guess that's still the second highest in the game, so I don't know what the hell I'm saying. Uh, I do know what you're saying as a, as a theory, just because you're right. Because NP is out of experience range for so much of the gold he gets. Dude, it was going to be caught here. But... I mean, this is due, right? Like, Immortals are going to be losing heroes. In fact, they're going to go for a kill that no one really expects. Diving a tier 3 tower. They give up on that idea. Pretty yeah, And it wasn't worth it, because look, his Midas is, he's just not using it. He's actually just not. There we go. All right, Grant's trick. He wants the most down, 31 seconds. Yeah, it was 31 seconds. You're losing XP by not casting it, ESM. This is true. Now, have I explained to you guys my EHP value of a Midas before? <laughs> the EHP of a Midas. Okay, explain. What does EHP stand for again? <laughs> Effective health points. Yeah, exactly. So by getting higher levels in the game, you get a more high effective health pool, right? So by not casting Midas, you're losing experience, losing levels, losing gold, which can also buy you HP. Thus, a Midas unused is a negative 11.5 EHP normally. <laughs> Bloodseekers minus off cooldown, by the way. Out so, of curiosity, so 12, 12 HP that? points, that's all you're missing out on from not using your Midas? Yeah, but you're also missing out on damage. I'm only talking EHP. I Are we talking it, like per me. second? Like is it 12 HP per second or? If, maybe more. Sometimes we use the metric system. <laughs> 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 all right, you can't argue you're with science. You're an NA? Since when? Oh, I don't use it myself, but I'm just, you know, helping out the viewers. You know, I've learned it's more about the viewers than ourselves, mm. you know. So I like to get the metrics, the kilometers, you know, all of that in there. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. <laughs> After all, I know <laughs> HP points is definitely an, uh, an American metric. I don't know what they use over there in Europe. Exactly. Maybe you could enlighten us, Stephen, with your casting of European Dota. After this 5v5, maybe. After this 5v5. Oh, okay. Well, that's a bad start to the 5v5. QO just straight up misses the bound of the strike and doesn't have it for another 15 seconds. The exorcism already out. Fortunately, QO didn't have his trees knocked out from underneath him from MSS. They are chipping away at some of these trees, but this tier 1 tower is definitely going to be going down without Immortals contesting. Now, they're probably going to be able to hold on to their tier 2, it looks like. And, uh, this is just a tower and nothing. I mean, MSS was even farming a little bit during that early push, so... Only four committed from DC until the end of it. They just got the better, oh, better trade on that. Ooh, I like this, though. The exorcism is down, right? So they go for the five-man push-out real quickly. See if they can force the fight. Because they can't touch fights forever. Yeah. They can't. And with this big smoke, I mean, who do you look for, though? MSS is a good kill, but if you kill MSS up top, you don't find anything. Instead, oh. they're going to find Slardar. And he just or blinks not. away. Great play from Bulba. Stopping them in their tracks. I mean, the Immortals. Smoke, yeah. They wanted to make a play. They, they waited for this moment. No Aegis, but I think DC understand that as well. Going to be hiding away now, making sure they take better engagements. We see Midas coming out from Bulba. I'm fine on a hero that can't farm by himself. Like you said, like Monkey King, you get an Echo Saber, you actually clear Creep Wave so quickly. Bulba, you stun a Creep Wave and you still need three hits for like every Creep to do anything, so it's a good catch-up tool. He's actually going to be making his way towards the Monkey King. He thinks that just him and the Furion would be enough to be able to take the Monkey King down, but they give up on that dream as... QL backs himself away after killing the creep wave. He's getting closer and closer to his desolator. One of those big, big upgrades. Yep, and obviously those the the Wukong warriors proc it themselves. So just mm -hmm. big team fight. Once you get that level two ulti, didn't wait. He has it. I mean that armor. 14 armor. When they don't have a deso, they have no armor removal. He's gonna be at 20 armor in fights. That's just insane. Versus the ghost, right? Yeah. Even with uh ulti from Slardar. I mean, the thing is, it sounds impressive, but with 20 armor, he still technically has zero if he gets focused down because Corrosive Haze is going to remove 10, and MSS does have that Solar Crest, so, I mean, that's minus 20, and we're not even throwing in the Weaver bugs. Bro, then you let Pugna and Bloodseeker go untouched, Steven, or what? I mean, 
I'm pretty Pro sure. Probably if, you focus if you're on in down. the Monkey King Ultimate, you probably gotta. Yeah. All right, there's the Desolator, but Digital Chaos will get Aegis and Cheese as the second Roshan already falls. Uh, I do, I do like the points that you were making though about the higher levels of the Wukong's command. Um, I think the levels are incredibly important for Monkey King because he's got that level 15 talent as well. Where if you're behind in a game like this, the the HP is so important. Febby's gonna be caught trying to fly his way to the shrine. Actually gets a four staff from MP. He's gonna be good for now. QO. Is he gonna drop that ultimate? No, he actually gets silence. And now with the amplify damage on him, Bulba ready to follow up with the crush is gonna be able to catch him plus more. Uh, maybe not. He's actually gonna be uh, chased away by MP. They get a silence on a Mason, but Febby dropping lower and lower does have flying up. Not going to be able to use it just yet, though. Oh, nice ice path from Dubu. They're going to go straight for MSS, but still can't make the full committal just because these heroes are too damn low. Febby toying with Mason as he flies over on Mason, not willing to make that commitment for the kill as he values his life a little bit more. Simple pickoff for Digital Chaos on the Monkey King. Nothing more really being used for that. Just a, a nice pickoff into a, a, a possible more payoff. So Mortals did a good job of cutting their losses, though. Really unfortunate. All they wanted to do was save Febby, and they do end up losing the Monkey King in return. And it's like, I think every kill on QO is like that much bigger for, for DC because he's pretty much like the, the centerpiece of their team fight. That this thing, right? Bloodseeker, he went four step before Radiance. Like, Bloodseeker can't team fight right now. All he's useful for is his AoE silence and maybe a rupture on somebody. But wh who do you put on Abed? He just Yules this. He's fine. It's a really good stat, whoever put that up. Well, thank yeah, you. Well, well done. Yeah, if people didn't know, actually, Febby was pretty big in Dota 1 in Canada. He went to a lot of Canadian lands. Actually, almost got into a fist fight, I believe, it was 1437 at a local Canadian land 2009. It's pretty deep in DNA culture. That's actually the first time I met Febby. We were in the same Is Warcraft 3 clan. No, oh. no, no, not a land, but we played on in the same clan. Oh, yeah, Febby was definitely. I mean, not, you, you can see it in, in, in just like how he acts and stuff. He's a little different than the other Southeast Asians. You know, that's the NA in him. That's why he's one of the best SEA players of all time. Is that why he dresses true. up as a girl? Dyer's yes. <laughs> I mean, who hasn't done that? Let's be real. Who doesn't just dress in their, like, you know, siblings' clothing? It's all right. I got to go. <laughs> I want to see Granny Grant. <laughs> I mean... You know, maybe we'll we'll see. You know where the streams take us. Oh, look at this flank, possibly from behind by Dark Green, Fabby, hitting with those Tostita crispy ass chips. Bulba looking for his opportunity does get ruptured, blown up by Fareb. Nice two man silence though. Mason trying to follow oh, that Abed. one up, but with Abed in trouble, he does have the cheese though, and they're going to be able to get the Oracle save out on him as well. And QO stuck inside his own ultimate is going to be gobbled up by Abed. Well, Mason gets the back lines as well, and to pick up the Pugna, Mason drops a little bit low, but he does have the Aegis, and Immortals realize this is just not a fight they can really win. They can trade blow for blow, but they'll never be able to overwhelm Digital Chaos with the Aegis and Cheese. Yeah, no, my death probably. We just see how good it is, especially with the Oracle, right? And the Cheese. Like, he probably didn't even have to eat the Cheese right there, and they would have been fine. He just maybe didn't trust Moon Man or get the ulti off. I mean, what if Night Stalker silenced him? But yeah, pretty nicely won team fight there. And I love Bulba got blown up. He got Decrep ruptured, and then a Void from Night Stalker did like 525 damage or something. He just died. Yeah. It's pretty funny to see the uh, decrep combo on Slargars, especially since they're usually sprinting. The damage amplification is just so ridiculous. So Weaver now. I mean, Weaver getting that second item. Uh, I've heard a lot of people don't like Lincoln's first anymore. Is do you guys still are you still fine with like Aquila into Lincoln's? Necessity against Bloodseeker. I think that's right. the the biggest reason. Otherwise, yeah. it's, you know, kind of whatever. MSS tries to cut down the trees. But Monkey King is able to make a swift getaway. Really needs that BKB. Really needs the Radiance on MP as well. And this is beginning to become a little bit of a time game where Digital Chaos are closing off more and more of the map faster and faster. And Immortals have to find a way to finish their items before they get completely shut out. Dyer's structures are fortified. 
It just looks so difficult because I just keep looking at Kyo's Monkey King and he's just got Phase Boots and Deso. It's just so hard for them to fight. Night Stalker's gem. He's done. Damn. He was doing so well with that Aghanim Scepter. I mean, the fact that he even got it was impressive. And then run around with the gem finally and start taking down Vision, but losing it not like two minutes after picking it up. Yeah. So as a Jakiro, well, what's your job in this game, right? Like usually in the early game, you're supposed to just push towers down stuff. Now he has maxed ice path. Like who do you want to hit in the ice path? Are you just trying to do it on the fly or is there anyone like specific? For, I, I feel like it's just on the fly. There's just too much going on in these team fights. And I mean, Death Prophet, probably not even your priority. If he has his ulti going, it's going to do damage to you anyways. Uh, maybe try to protect your carries instead with it. You hope that you can catch a Weaver who's trying to get in, as well as uh, a Slaughter who wants to get in. That makes sense. I feel like most of his job is like uh, more on the fact that he's just got to find a way to... Oh no, the oh, Ulus Scepter on the Monkey King right before he can jump away, but they do have defensive force tasks. Uh, maybe they have one for Dubu or not. Dubu's going to be the one caught out here. Pretty decent silence from Abed too. QO's in some serious trouble. They're trying to finish him off with a Desolator proc, but Mason doesn't quite have enough damage to get him. Nether Ward also kind of keeping them at bay. To Crapify, buying a little bit of time for that little itty bitty ward. DC. Another pick off for them. Back themselves away. I think that the Jakiro's just gotta be the, the guy who stops some of these pushes and, and honestly gets I think sometimes he's gotta be the one who pushes out waves simply because it doesn't matter too much if he gets caught. Or at least he's the no. the person that matters the least. Yeah, oh man, but with this death prop of the Shiva's guard now, I I really don't see how immortals can 5v5 fight. They need like I, mass four staff pushes on on uh, Death Prophet or something when she's ruptured. I think the only way they're gonna win these team fights is that they somehow manage to start an engagement with Moon going down first. Like you can't. I don't think you can let this Oracle cast spells. Yeah, oh, they're going. Poking a Bulba. Use of the darkness there. And all the vision in the world doesn't change. The fact that you can't really go on these heroes. They're trying to catch the Monkey King right now using both Shivas and Sprout. Good luck. Scouting through the trees. Oh, I got a trivia question for you guys. How many stats does Ghost Scepter get without looking it up? Six. Wrong. No, it's, it's, it's not that it's low, is it? It is. It's five now. Oh. It's been nerfed. Like, we were talking about me and Lacoste. We were, we were talking. We're like, it's like plus ten. He's like, no, it's lower. It's like plus seven. We look, it's plus five. It's actually like just, I mean, you you literally only get it for ethereal form. I mean, it was way too good when it gave plus ten right when it came out. But yeah, yeah. So that was just a little Grant trivia, pardon me. Yeah, I remember, like, the absurdity of it because it was as much as uh, an ultimate. It, 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 yeah, it was yeah, less than an ultimate orb, but it gave you the same stats. And eth ethereal form, yeah. So Mason has a death, so now we saw him a sieging down that bottom Ooh. tower with it. Ooh, I mean, you bro, Cap, you know you can't catch a Monkey King. Fuck <laughs> out of here. Dude, you really can't. Oh, they're going to smoke up. I think they feel like the DC's a bit split. Well, they're right. Oh, this is going to be a huge pickoff if they manage to find Mason. They see Mason, take away his Lincolns, do manage to get the silence onto him, plus the ice path, but can they actually blow him up before he manages to get off his ultimate? They do get him. Big it's time kill. Plus Moon Meander, it looks like, but Digital Chaos are kind of forming. No, 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 they're all out. They're going to leave Moon Meander to his death. Almost catching the Fury on with that ice path, though. That's just so... You kill their carry who, like... Mason had the gem, and he's firing by themselves in the enemy jungle. That's just a definite misplay and a really good smoke gank. And he didn't immediately, like, pop the ultimate once his Lincolns got hit. He maybe didn't know, like, what actually was coming. But, yeah, that definitely feels like a little bit of a misplay. But look at, oh, bottom lane with the creeps pushed in middle. Go ahead, Grant. It's going to get a bit it. of damage. That's a good bit of unhealable damage. Actually, it might, it's going to take it below 50%. That's 800. Look at it. Look at this. Wait, that's actually just broken. Unhealable damage, ladies and gentlemen. People didn't believe. And then, you know, people like kind of made fun of me for saying that stuff. And then they watched the uh, 
the CIS Grand Finals and like the three hour game with Empire and stuff and they saw the tier four towers with regen, no one doubted me then. <laughs> Every single time I see a situation where teams against mega creeps and they keep on uh, keeping their tier four towers alive for like impossibly long stretches, all I think about you is, is you, Grant. That's all I think Thanks. about. You. You're making me blush. Oh, Dubu. <laughs> Dubu? Not gonna get caught. All right, Immortals are going to take their first tower since, like, 15 minutes when they were going ham through mid and bottom. They managed to bring it back. It's dead even again in terms of net worth. They see the Furion, but Mason now sees Febby. And managed to get bugs onto Ferev as well. Now, QO is still going to go straight for MSS. Does manage to get off the Jingu. The sounds goes down onto Mason. They brought Bulba pretty low as well. QO is forced back to Fury and is going to try and join the rest of his team now. Throwing down the ultimate. Protecting this area from Abed, who's going to run through it and try and go for the rest of the team. But they've got the silence out. QO is actually just leaving the rest of his team. And Immortals is going to run away from Abed. They think this is a fight that they just do not want to take against that Death Prophet, and they're probably right. Immortals have forced out an Exorcism and lost very little for it. Yep, one for one Pugna for Slardar, not too bad. Tome of Knowledge drop. Looks like QO is going to be the one picking it up, and I think they just heal up and go again. I mean, this is a, a big bait. Yeah, they're going to smoke up. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I mean, Monkey King's ult's great, but when Exorcism's down... DP's actually one of the most useless heroes. Meanwhile, Monkey King has a, an AoE stun crit, insane amounts of damage. Like, his ult's great, but you don't need it this late in the game. And MSS just TP'd into top lane. Oh, they a missed. Miss Boundless Strike. I'm sure that they're still going to catch him, right? They're going to be able to get the jump on, and the silence makes sure that Oracle is not going to TP into that one. Yep, that's just a really good good call by you there, Steven. That was a quick smoke and just an easy pick off there. Cause they have, look at those wards on the top lane middle. DC's just letting themselves get caught. What a beautiful ice path. Catches Bulba as he tries to jump in with a boundless strike combo. Mason. Oh, Mason's actually in trouble. He almost dies to that one. Does manage to get off his ultimate, but he's going to eat through the Night Stalker oh, in the back line. So QO fights up against Abed, but they manage to get the Oracle save off. He's got the Aegis, though. MP, he's going straight for MSS, especially with the Death Prophet so low. He's so fast. He eats the cheese, goes for that last oh, bit of damage, but he's play. disarmed by Moon Meander, and he'll die underneath the tower. MP goes too deep, while Immortals, they didn't manage to get the, the Weaver, right? Mason got that kill and got out. Yep. And did more that, importantly, he got the gem back. Oh, wow. Did that four staff bug for the Bloodseeker? It looked like he used, he used four staff and he like flew around building instead of going over him. That was weird. It did look a little weird, but I think that was due to the fact that there were so many heroes that were low. Yeah, that that he just ran speed. so fast. Yeah. Oh, that was a very strange fight by both teams, but the tier two tower does go down and Immortals takes him. I mean, this is. I don't want to say classic DC because you never want to say classic when it's a bad thing, but these guys are good at like winning that first 20 minutes of a game and then they just, I wouldn't say they feel lost, they just lose the late game when they're up. This... For me, it just feels like they're a little too conservative, but that's really all it comes down to. And, and then once they lost control of the map, I feel like they weren't conservative enough. You know, like, you you had to just hole up in your base at that point. Oh, Dubu and Mason smoked and saw each other. They're going to try and wrap. They were looking for QO. In fact, they're even throwing out. Oh, no. Oh, come on. <laughs> come on, man. I love that here. Uh-oh. And here they all come. Now the chase. They've got the they've got the vision on MSS. They're going to be able to spot him out. Gets the void. There's the stun from Bulba. But a One nice, nice ice path again. once again. But a better silence from Abed. Abed's going to be in some serious trouble. The Oracle immediately throws the ultimate down on him. But he's ruptured. Surrounded by Monkey King ultimate. Getting sucked on deliciously by Ferev. Abed is definitely dead. So it's up to Mason now to carry through this fight. But he can't get anywhere near that Monkey King ultimate. He's got to get chased away. Silenced up. They've got vision of him too. They're just trying to kite him around. What's our blood? Seeker up to alongside Fred. They're trying to chase down Bulba with the Radiance. He's not going to be able to blink out of that one. Will eventually die. Mason away into the tree, spotted out by QO. Managed to spot him and brings him down with a balance strike and two right clicks. That's five down from Digital Chaos and Immortals. Looks like they're going to be able to take the first racks of this game, if not two. 
Yeah, that was just such a per. Like we said, Dubu, man, these ice paths, he's hitting like no less than two heroes every time. And they're two clutch heroes. And Abed, I mean, he got his ulti off right, but they were just hitting a BKB Monkey King when he had 20, like 40 armor. It, it just did nothing. Yeah, he's finally reached that stage where he is. You just cannot ignore this Monkey King in these team fights. He just does way too much damage. And I, I just, I honestly can't believe Immortals are in this position again. This, this has to feel... Dude, Immortals has done this to two teams now. They were... It's 1-1. One, one, they're losing game three. They did it to VGJ, I think, two nights ago. And now they're doing it to DC again. Immortals, they, that experience. Boba does manage to get the two months stun out. But now Rupture with a silence coming in as well. MP doesn't want to give up his life for a Slardar, though. Immortals should be very happy with what they accomplished. One lane of Rax down bottom. They're going to catch MSS, actually trying to sneak in and take the tier three and the melee racks but unsuccessful ends up going down bad. like now you have your your best hero on the map is a death prophet who is just completely countered by the position one here on the other side like well, what do you do i don't know steven what do it you was do? a rhetorical dumbasses <laughs> <laughs> i mean the the thing is like this this game just got even like that much harder when they kind of threw away their lead and they're against the Night Stalker. So you can't even hope for a perfect initiation, right? Like even though Boba has a Blink Dagger, it's just so hard for him to find the right targets. I think if they're gonna hope for a chance to win this game, they are going to have to uh, hope for the dream smoke play. Yeah, well, we've seen like a two times they've almost caught QO, but almost is definitely not good enough. Oh, he's got a Scotty now too. Holy smokes, he is jacked. This is looking like me after I went to the gym for the first time. You know when you just like, you go to the gym for the first time, you just feel like you're gonna be that dude. I mean, he actually is, but I mean, my mindset was like that. I'll see you, Bulba. And Bulba trying to protect the ward. Doesn't go too well. That was a good analogy, Grant. I like that. Oh, thank you. I mean, I, I hate to be the guy that says it, but this game is looking pretty damn, and his Monkey King, I don't think, you, you could even, ex like, just if DC was allowed to change heroes in the middle of the game, like, there's nothing to do with this Monkey King at this point. Yeah. It's, uh... I think it's it's actually one of the best late-game heroes in the game. As, as, like, silly as that sounds, when you contrast it with what Monkey King used to be, which was this the best four position in the world, you know? Like, the, the fact that this hero now is just turning into this big carry is... Look at him, just going straight Holy for Abed. Shit, Rupture and Silence is going to be going out. QO does not have an agent, so he's going to try and throw out his ultimate to try and dodge some of this physical damage because he's got forever. The back line's just... Oh, giving it to him. Good. Look at the heal go. QO is not dead. I was just about to say he's going to die to the Death Prophet, but not even that. They can't get a single kill. Oh, my. That was just... Oh. Thick play by 4F. Yeah, that was. That's just Immortals doing what they've done the last couple of days. And I mean, honestly, DC doing what they've done the last couple of days. Have an early lead, you know, maybe be too little too passive, maybe not do enough, and you just slowly fall behind, and then magically QO has six items. Damn. I think that definitely is DC's biggest weakness, though. I, I feel like time and time again, they. They just do so well in the laning phase, and then they try their very best to just maintain it, but in doing so, never really accomplishing too much. Like, this entire game, it felt like DC was in control, but if you look at the graphs, I mean, while feeling in control, the net worth was just not there. Yep. I think the, the most impressive thing for me was that period of time where Digital Chaos was very clearly in control of the game, and yet Immortals just dodged them. And, and managed to keep, like, that gold lead from spiraling downwards to Digital Chaos's favor. They continued to farm up. I mean, Fendi had, like, a really well-timed Night Stalker Aghanims, considering how little control and little... Like, they couldn't even fight Digital Chaos at all. And he still managed to pick up, like, what, a 30-minute uh, Aghanims or something like that? Yeah. I think it was earlier than that, even. I, I mean, you can actually just check the... Uh, yeah, let's check the scoreboard. Items. Yeah, come on, Cap. Oh, oh, he picked it up at minutes. 21 minutes. Damn. That's that's on par with like, my play, but you know. 
<laughs> yeah, look, I mean, if we even look at the uh, the grass too, like you were doing, like actually, I mean, Radiant never really had that big of a lead. It just, I guess, because they have a Nature's Prophet and a Death Prophet. Obviously, their mid game push is going to be better. But man, once they lost that one team fight, it, it was just curtains. And the, I mean, the thing is too, you know, the Nature's Prophet. I feel like they were playing very conservatively with this Nature's Prophet as well. You know, they're probably telling him to just constantly come to fights that he doesn't really need to come to. I think that like his overall low level and low amount of farm just comes down to the fact that he's not actually doing what nature's profits normally do. And that's just a farm and split push. Yeah.